Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV and in this video I'll be showing you how to replace a condenser fan motor. Now if you're watching this and you are not sure whether your condenser fan motor is bad or not, I do have a video where I show you how to check if it's bad or not. And also a video on how to check and replace a capacitor because sometimes maybe it's just a capacitor that is bad and your fan motor isn't actually bad at all. And lastly, you might run into a situation where your old motor has three wires but the new motor that you get has four wires. If that happens to you, I do have a video showing you what to do in a situation like that, whether it be a three wire going to a four or a four going to a three. And for those of you that need to know how to order the motor, get the right motor for your unit, all you will need to do is get the model and serial of your unit. It's usually gonna be on a sticker, somewhere by the electrical section or around your unit. Find the model number of your unit and then go to either repairclinic.com or dayparts.com. I'll have links to that along with parts and tools in the video description of this video. Go to that site and then using that model number, find the motor that you need. Once you find the correct motor for your unit, you can get the part number off of it. And if you wanted to, you could shop around on Amazon or eBay to get a better deal. All right, that's it for the preface, let's begin. Of course, the very first thing we wanna do is turn off the power. So turn your thermostat to off and also turn your unit off as well. The condenser unit outside, there should be no power going to it. I like to do this just at the disconnect box, right by the unit itself. Or you can also turn off the power at the circuit breaker panel inside of your house. Next up, let's take off this cover door that's hiding all of our electrical components so we can access the wires. And since in the past I've been zapped more times than I would like, I like to always confirm and make sure that I don't have power at the unit before I start touching any wires. So I set my meter to voltage. You could also use a voltage pen just as well to see if you have any power coming into the unit. So this is the two hot legs coming into the contactor. If you're not sure which side of the contactor to check, that's no big deal, just check them both. So this one is zero volts. And this one is zero volts. So we know that our power is off. Once I verify that the power is off, I like to start at the top. So let's leave this alone for now. There should be four bolts or screws up on top that hold the motor in place. Sometimes they're underneath little covers. You need to just pluck them off with a flathead screwdriver to see the screws that you need to take out. Usually I use my drill with a deep socket bit. This time I don't have those with me. So I'll just use a little wrench, a ratcheting wrench which works just as well. And what I like to do before I take this whole top off, I like to loosen these up a little bit. That way, once you have this whole top off, you can take it off the rest of the way just with your fingers. Makes it more convenient. So I loosen it just a bit on all four. Okay, and that's enough. And now we're gonna take all the screws off of this top cover here and we're gonna take this whole entire piece off along with the motor. And I know that I might be petty, but what I like to do is start the screw, start taking it out by hand, just like this, and then press the trigger. That conserves a lot of battery life and it lasts me a lot longer, believe it or not. Just throwing that out there. And sometimes there's also a little screw right on top that holds the little wire protector or the wire sleeve. You can take that out as well because we will need to take this off. And of course, try not to lose any of the screws. If you have a little tray that holds the screws, a magnetic tray, great. If not, then just throw it into the capacitor box or something so that none of them get lost. Just a brief video interruption to show you this cool cat. Its name is Wasp. Nice cat, it just came over here, so I thought I would show it to you. But the video must go on. After all the screws are out, we can now take the top off. Okay. And I like to flip it over and just put it right back on the unit. And when you're doing this part, just do it nice and slow. Sometimes there's enough slack 
with the wires where you can actually pull them out and flip it over all the way. In this case, the wires are getting really tight. So what I'm gonna do is I have two options. Either I can take the wires off at the capacitor and the contactor so I can take the wires fully out or I can just simply snip them off. And since the new motor will come with new wires and new connectors, this won't be a problem. So I'm just gonna go ahead and snip these off. There you go. In fact, I can slide this off now too. Oh, to make my life easier though, I'll just set this down. There. We can take this sleeve off. And remember that one screw we took off? That was from this bracket right here. Needless to say, I got really lucky that this nest right here is dead. There's no wasps in there. But as I'm looking at it, I see another one right over here with a couple of wasps staring at me. So I'm probably gonna get something to spray at them before we continue. Otherwise, I'm gonna be running real fast. My wife was not very eager to get stung, so unfortunately, all the wasp combat happened off camera. But anyway, some wasps are still coming home to a destroyed home, so I took this whole cover off and I put it on the grass, and we'll continue from here for now. And actually, we are at the hardest part. A lot of people get stuck here, including myself. Sometimes the fan blade will just not come off the old motor. So I'll show you a couple of things that you could do to try to persuade it to come off. This is how I do it. First, you take the set screw off. You don't have to take it off completely, you just have to loosen it. And the reason that I'm using a tooth wrench, a channel locks, is so that I can stress the point that if you use a tooth wrench on the shaft itself, you're gonna have a really hard time trying to pull this fan blade off of there. And that's because the teeth marks that you leave on there, they pretty much stop the blade from coming out. So never use the tooth wrench on the shaft itself. After you loosen this set screw, the next thing you wanna do is put a wrench, an adjustable crescent or just a regular wrench on the shaft to hold it in place and try to spin the fan blade while holding the shaft in place. Try to spin it. There you go. And at the same time, push it down towards the motor. So once the fan blade is down completely on the motor, and before you attempt to pull the whole blade off of the shaft, I would recommend cleaning up the shaft a little bit with some sandpaper. It doesn't matter what kind of grit you're using. Just clean it up so it's clean. There's no little specks or dirt or anything else sticking out that's gonna hinder the motor from coming out. The fan blade, I mean. There, that looks better already. And if you actually already bit into your shaft and there's tooth marks on it, what you could do is take a file and just start filing it down. File it down until those tooth marks are not there and hopefully you'll be able to pull it off. Worst case scenario, you could always just cut it off, but cutting off the shaft is not the best option. And lastly, I like to apply some lubricant. I usually use the Zoom Spout Oiler. I don't have that with me right now, so I'll just use some WD-40. Any lubricant will do. Just spray some on top of the shaft and make sure that the whole shaft is lubed up. And now that you sanded it and you lubed it up, the fan blade should slide right off. Usually it's very easy if you do it this way, the way I just showed you. So just wiggle it, wiggle it. Look at that, like butter. And this went really smooth, I love it. Sometimes this fan blade just does not come off. One more thing you could do is try to heat up the shaft with a torch. That sometimes does help get it off. But if you do it the way I showed you, you know, the whole process, it almost always comes off very easy. And remember the screws that I loosened on top of the unit in the beginning? I can just simply loosen them up all the way with my fingers. Make sure not to lose the washers if there's any washers. I'm holding the motor in from the inside, pushing it towards the top and taking these screws out just by hand. Once you have the screws out, the motor should come right out. And here it is. 
And really, I should have done this before I even took the old motor out, but I like to just double check and make sure that the new motor that I have matches up with the old one for the RPM and for the horsepower. So the RPM on this old one was 835, one speed motor. And if you look on the new one, it's also 835, one speed. The horsepower is one sixth, and this one is one sixth as well. And I did get an OEM motor, not a generic one. So it should be an exact replacement of this one. I also want to show you this. I guess when it was shipped, these screws got bent. And that could be bad. This one's straight, this one's bent, and this one's bent. So three of them are bent. I might be able to get away with it. They might just go right into the holes. If not, you could try to carefully, carefully. In fact, if you're gonna use a channel locks, maybe even put like a piece of cloth or something in here and carefully bend this back so you don't damage the threads. And that should be enough. Cause if, if they're not too bent, you should be able to bend them back just enough to get them through that hole. Let's go ahead and put the new motor in. Before we insert it, we should put the sleeve or put the wires through the sleeve. And if you don't remember where this thing was, usually wherever this bracket was, you're gonna see like a little faded out spot. So it was over here. And plus I had this insulation too, which helps me remember which side this was on. If you have no little landmarks like that, then perhaps when taking this off, put like an X or something with a permanent marker so you know where to put the sleeve. So let's go ahead and shove all these wires through. Okay. And now we're gonna put this motor, the screws, into those holes and hopefully everything will insert just fine and I won't have to bend any screws. Look at that. It went in just fine. Next, we fastened the motor to the top. Once again, just finger tight. After I put this cover back on the unit, then we can tighten it all the way. And the reason I have it tilted up like this is because I'm not actually holding the motor from that side. So if I tip it more, it might slide out of these holes. Now that I have two of these in, I could probably make my life a little bit easier. The threads and this screw were a little bit damaged. So I'm not able to tighten it down that much with my fingers. It gets stuck, but I should be able to complete this with a wrench. So I'm not too worried about it. And we may as well fasten the wire sleeve at this point too. One more thing I wanna show you. If you don't have a sleeve like this and your wires are just hanging, maybe they go somewhere here, but after you put the whole unit in, they're just kind of sagging down. You don't wanna leave them like that because the fan blade, it might catch them and rip them all up. I've seen that happen before. So what you can do is just take a couple of zip ties, take all three of these wires, and just go one zip tie, two zip tie, three zip tie. Just zip tie them to these grates so the fan blade does not get the wires. When you're putting the fan blade on the new motor, just refer to the old one. See that mark from the set screw? That is approximately where you're gonna want that fan blade to be on the new motor. So we want our set screw to be right underneath this white line. Like that. And you want the set screw to be on the flat side of the shaft. If your shaft has two flat sides, then just pick one of them, it doesn't really matter. So once you got a flat side, you got it lined up. It doesn't have to be perfect, just approximately in the same spot where the old one was. You can tighten down the set screw and you're almost done. You do want the set screw pretty tight because if it's loose from the vibration with time, this fan blade can start to slowly ease its way off. So make sure you have the set screw nice and tight because that's the only thing holding this blade on the shaft. 
We're done mounting the motor. Next thing I do is go find those wires that I snipped off and see where these wires come out on the electrical section. In my case, it's these three wires right over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull them out one by one. And here's my three cut ends. And now I'm just gonna see where these three wires go. Okay, I finally got the wires untangled. So the brown wire goes to the capacitor, purple wire also goes to the capacitor, and the black wire goes to our defrost control board as this is a heat pump. And also another word of advice, whenever you're replacing a condenser fan motor, I always, always replace the capacitor as well. It'll make that new fan motor last a lot longer. But before we get to the capacitor, let's go ahead and finish up with the fan motor first. And now, nice and easy, put this fan motor along with the top cover back on. It is a little bit heavy though, so take your time. You don't wanna wreck anything when you're so close to success. Okay. Now I like to just hold one side up and grab my wires, route them in there. And we're gonna bring them out the same hole where we pulled those other wires out. I finally got the wires out. And now I'm simply going to take these wires off one at a time and put the new wires in. So brown off, put the brown in. Next we have purple, take the purple off. Put the new purple in. And lastly we have the black. We'll take the black off as well and put the new one in. And sometimes the new wires are gonna be super long, so you're gonna to have to loop them back and forth a couple of times and then you can just zip tie the whole thing all together. These wires are just long enough, so I'm not even gonna zip tie them. I'm just gonna tuck them in like that. And then we're just gonna close this whole panel back up after we're done. This part can be a little bit annoying, but I believe in you, you can get through it. Basically, you have to put this top cover on the lips all the way around. And usually what ends up happening is you put one side in, you put another side in, and by the time you get to the third and fourth sides, this side pops back out. So just keep going round and round until you finally got this thing on. And one more thing I forgot to mention, these metal edges, especially the aluminum fins on the coil, can be super, super sharp. So either wear gloves or just be extremely careful, as careful as me. Man, I got everything on except this little nasty side. Oh yeah! Babe, you're amazing. Thank you. The best. So I finally got this darn thing on. Now all we need to do is just put all the screws in and we should be good to go to start testing. No wait, we have to put the capacitor in too. And one more thing I remembered. Um, um, um. One more thing I like to do is reach in with something long, like a wrench or a long screwdriver or some kind of a bit extension and just give the fan blade a spin. And look where your wires are from the motor. And the way I'm seeing it, my wires are way too close for comfort. I have a feeling that with time, these fan blades are gonna start cutting them up. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to take this cover back off and what I'm gonna do is just zip tie those wires just to some copper pipes on the sides so it's further away from those fan blades. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna have to mess with zip ties. All I have to do is simply pull on the wires like that so there's no extra slack in there. Perfect, look at that. Now the fan blade is definitely not gonna get them. And now that my wires are a little bit longer, and to prevent them from going back out there with time, I'm just gonna go ahead and shove them into this existing zip tie. 
like that. And that will keep them nice and secure. Last but not least is the capacitor. And this is gonna be the easiest part. Just loosen up the bracket, slide the old one out, and the wires are too tight. That's okay, we'll take this screw out all the way. Move this bracket aside. There you go. And these things do sometimes hold the charge. So before you touch any of these terminals, it's always a good idea to short it out with a screwdriver or a nut driver. Just touch all these terminals together like that. And if there's any charge in there, it'll get discharged. Okay, so now I can pull these wires off and just like the motor, I like to do this one at a time. Here's my Herm, here's my Herm. If you want more details on the capacitor part of it, I do have that video on how to replace and check a capacitor, including what to do if your new capacitor is smaller than the old one. We got fan, fan, pull that off, put it on fan. And then we have two common, two wires going to the common. Pull that off, pull that off, put them both on here. Okay, reinstall it, and we're done with that. See how wobbly the new one is? I don't like leaving it like that, so what I do is just crimp down on the bracket, just anywhere. Usually works the best by the screw. Just push down into it with a nut driver or a flathead screwdriver. Oh, nice and stiff like that. And now it's tight, not going anywhere. Don't forget to tighten these. I'm loosening it. <laughs> there you go. It looks like my battle is not quite over. The screw holes are not lining up. And that's not because I put it on wrong. It's on correctly. All I need to do is just grab these grates and push from this side at the same time. And look at that, the screw hole appears. So I'm gonna to try to keep that in place and get it started by hand. Wow, I tell you, it usually never goes, never goes flawless. There's always something wrong. But one way or another, we'll get it done. After you get the first couple of them started, the rest of them line up a lot easier. I think we're finally done. Before I put this cover back on, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power back on outside and on the thermostat, and let's make sure this thing works great. And one last thing I like to confirm when I just turn it on is to make sure that the fan blades are spinning the right direction. So basically you want the fan blades to be scooping the air, going down. So in my case, it'll be spinning this way. Once in a long time, maybe you wired something wrong or something else goofy happened, perhaps the motor is bad right out of the box, sometimes it'll spin the wrong direction. So you do wanna make sure that it's spinning the right direction so it's pushing the air out. I'm gonna go turn the thermostat on. It's working awesome. The fan is spinning the right way. The suction line is starting to sweat. Always love seeing that. And these extra wires that I cut off, if you're a technician and you don't have a collection of wires, spare wires just in your bag or in your van, I would recommend keeping these. They do come in useful. I have like a whole big Ziploc bag of wires. They, they do save me sometimes. Well guys, and that is all I had for you. I hope that you found this video useful. If you have any other questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, check out this fish toy that we got for my parents, cats. We called it the Cat Slapper. It was a lot of fun. If you have a cat of your own, I'll leave an Amazon link in the video description. Enjoy and have fun!